everyone, Kirsten and Jeannie here with Six Figure Business Coaching, and we're so excited to have you here today. As you guys know, we love helping our clients with outsourcing and automation as far as their marketing goes so that they can generate more leads and build their businesses. You've created some lead magnets and they're performing well organically. Maybe it's time to run some Facebook ads to them. So today we're going to talk with Carolyn. She is a Facebook and Instagram ad expert. And we're just going to talk about what's been going on in the past with ads, what's going on right now, and what to expect in the future. And she's got some great tips on managing your ads or when to hire an ads manager. So Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Earlier, we were having a conversation about how Jeannie and I, our personalities aren't ideal for ads because with ads, you're creating an ad and then you're let it run for a few days and then you've got to tweak it. And most people's normal responses is, is it performing well? Ah, let me go change everything. And that's not how it works. You have to change one little thing at a time. If you investigated the world of ads, you've probably heard people talk about testing. And what that means is taking the ads that you have and taking one aspect of it, just one, that's very important. Test one thing at a time and tweaking it a little bit and then looking at your data and deciding whether or not it worked. And you have five slots and you try to figure out what word goes in and you try something and you'll get feedback. Okay, this letter is in the right spot. This one is in the word, but not in the right spot. And you have to tweak it a little bit until you get that final word at the end. That's like ads, that's how it goes. So in number 2020, Apple came out with the iOS 14 update. And what this did was made a lot of changes to their privacy policy. If you have an Apple device and you've updated it, and then you've opened an app and you've gotten a little prompt, it pops up and it asks you, do you want to allow this app to track your data? And a lot of people are opting out from it. What that means is all of the data that was once available to us through Facebook ads manager and the Facebook pixel is very thrown off because there's some things are happening. You could be getting sales, clicks, whatever it is, but you really don't have a way to track it anymore. And so there's a big discrepancy in all the data. Ads are not as cheap as they once were, but I think it's a little hasty to say Facebook ads are done. Instagram ads are done. It's a new world. We're going to have to figure out how things are going to work now. But this affects apps all across the board. It also affects Snapchat, TikTok, Google. It's not just Facebook. Everybody is on an even playing field of learning about this. And moving forward, just last week on February 2nd, Mark Zuckerberg posted on Facebook. He talked about how things are going to work for Meta and they are planning on reworking the infrastructure. So. Everything that we talk about today is based on the information that we have now in a month or two, or maybe longer, it could be very different, or it could only be a little different. Carolyn, tell us if somebody were interested in doing Facebook or Instagram, ad, what's the best way for them to get started? No ad in the world is going to be a magic wand and fix all the problems. Ads are just one portion of it. First of all, I think before you think about running any kind of advertising, take a look at your whole marketing plan. How do ads fit into that? And if you take a look, everything looks good. You think you're ready for ads. Then for Facebook, start catching a theoretical funnel. Like what are you trying to accomplish? What is your overall goal? Do you have different goals for different parts of your funnel? Get really clear on your goals. I love that. Jeannie and I have, we've hired ads managers and we've done some ad management ourselves. And we're kind of like, we love to learn things. One of the things I think we learned really early on is all of your copy has to really work together. What people don't always realize is that all of that content has to connect together. So once you have a lead magnet and you have a funnel, so you've been out there promoting it organically, which that's one of the things we teach early on is promote it organically see how it performs and then adds to it. You're ready to do that. Your copy for your landing page is solid and that makes creating your ad a lot easier. You know, they kind of have to work together. It makes you really have to have everything in line, which is really important for your overall marketing strategy too. Definitely. And the great thing about that is you can take stuff from 
your other from organic social media that you've done or from your leads page and incorporate it into your ads. It doesn't have to be completely from scratch. Do you recommend putting videos in your ads? How do you feel about videos in the ads? I'd say overall, definitely. Um, Facebook, the algorithm seems to be favoring ads and on Instagram, everybody is really big on reels. So I say definitely give it a shot. If videos scare you and if you go, no, I am no camera for me, please. No, thank you. You can also come up with a graphic and make a gift for a boomerang, something that moves. That's a good place to start. Overall video does well, but just like we were talking about with testing, you have to test it, see what your audience responds to. It's interesting because one of the things that you said was it depends on your industry. Marketing is not one size fits all. So if you're an interior designer and this person's a dietitian, they're totally two different markets for what they're going after, right? So their copy would be different, their ad would be different, and they're going to perform differently, right? That's the kind of stuff that an experienced ad manager can say, hey, based on your industry, these are some trends that we see happening that's helpful. Yeah. And there are definitely ad managers who focus on niche and even your niche might have a different budget that's typically used, or people sometimes talk about their cost per click. How much does it cost to get someone to click on your ad? And that definitely varies on industries. Every industry has different standards. It's a good thing to do a little research beforehand, do some digging, to have an idea before you start running ads or talk to an ads manager. That way you aren't floored and surprised when, oh my gosh, this is this, it costs this much, right? or it might be less than that. Um, and then even more so your specific business and your stats will be yours unique to you. I was just going to say that you can actually go and search for Facebook ads library, You'll be able to see and search for pages that are advertising right now. So let's say you have a competitor and you want to see what ads they're running. It doesn't mm -hmm. tell you necessarily how successful the ad is, but it does tell you what kind of creative and copy they're using. So I find that a nice, a good resource when we're looking at doing ads. When you're talking about costs, a lot of our clients, they're either blogging or doing videos on YouTube. And what's fascinating is a lot of our clients are looking for multiple streams of income and mm -hmm. having their channel monetized or being able to promote affiliate links through their channels important. But what's really funny is when you think about the industries on YouTube that pay the most, those are also the industries that cost the most in ads, right? So if you're in a business niche where, you know, the ads that are running on your channel are geared towards business and software and things like that, you're going to earn more money per thousand views than someone that has, say, a fun channel about kids games or something like mm -hmm. that. But if, on the flip side, if you wanted to run Facebook ads for fun kids games, it would be a lot less expensive than mm -hmm. us running Facebook ads business to business. It has the flip side of that when it looks at income you're going to earn from content created. Yep. And even I think you bring up a great point talking about YouTube versus Facebook and Instagram. Before you start running ads, definitely look at where your target audience is. There's no point in screaming out into the void if nobody's there. If you are advertising your heart out on Facebook, but everybody is over on Pinterest. So take a look at that too. Yeah, it's really funny when you start creating original content and you're using primary content like a YouTube or video or a blog and you start to repurpose that, you really quickly figure out where your audience is because you'll see your audience grow. And so we have some clients who Pinterest is where their people are. They start to find that out. They start creating pins and things that other people think their audience is on Facebook, but then their Instagram accounts take off when they start consistently posting content. It's a really good point when it comes to thinking about where you're going to run ads. When you are setting up your ads in Facebook, you can run both Facebook and Instagram campaigns through Facebook's ads manager. Take a look at your data and see where you're getting the responses. And then if you want to just focus on Instagram, just do that. Or if you just want to focus on Facebook, you can do that too. It's always trending and changing, but we love testing and trying new things just to see how they respond. Sometimes you can have a smaller audience but get more interaction than having a larger audience and not getting a lot of interaction. I think that's a, another misnomer about ads is that you have to have this huge influencer size audience to be running ads. You don't have to be a huge company to be running ads on Facebook and Instagram. And you also don't have to run them all the time.
It's if you just want to run for an offer for the launch of a product or a service, that's fine. You can do that. That's right. When we decided to build a Facebook group, one of the things we decided to do was to host a challenge inside of the Facebook group. We ran ads to that. And that's how we started to build this Facebook group. And we did convert clients from that. So yeah. when you guys are thinking about running ads, there's lots of things you can do. You can run ads to build a Facebook group so you can start to really connect with people and build relationships. You can yeah. run ads that would take them just to a lead magnet, sign up for this free whatever. You can take mm -hmm. them to ads for a webinar, right? Here's mm -hmm. this webinar you should check out. You can take them to a sales page. Hey, here's this $29 ebook. Here's all the reasons why you have to have it. They can click and buy it right there. So there's so many different options, but I think one of the things that you said earlier, which is so true, is you want to have your other marketing in place. Because when you think about the ad, the landing page, the offer, then you have to think about the follow-up sequences to continue to nurture and build that relationship. So it really does make a big difference to have your foundational marketing in place before you start those ads. And email marketing is one of the best things you can do because the ROI is so high. And so sometimes people think, well, I ran ads and I didn't get as many sales as I wanted. But if you've got those email addresses and you're nurturing and building those relationships and explaining to them how you can transform their lives, you can get sales in the future from ads you ran ages ago. And that's, I'm glad you brought up ROI because that's one of the key things that you should be looking at um, about your KPIs, your key performance indicators. Always look at your return on investment. Sometimes people get wrapped up in the cost per click, which again, just a reminder, depends on your industry. And people might go, oh, that's high. But then take a look at your return on investment. If you're making money, hey, that's a great thing. Of course, there's nothing wrong with trying to lower your cost per click, to be clear. I wouldn't look at your cost per click first or any other metric. First, look at your ROI. Yeah. Are I, you I, making money? <laughs> but Carolyn, if I gave you a dollar and then you handed me $2, how often do you think I'm gonna hand you a dollar? Yeah. I'm going to keep getting you a dollar if you give me two dollars. Okay, Carolyn, here's another dollar. Where's my two dollars? So even if you have an ROI of just a dollar for you put out a dollar and you bring in two dollars, that's unbelievable. And then your goal is to get it to be, I give Carolyn two dollars and she gives me five dollars. And so yep. I'm working it up little by little. And then so eventually I give Carolyn five dollars and she's giving me fifteen dollars or yep. twenty dollars. So it really is a matter of looking at that ROI and just being happy. If I gave you a dollar and you gave me two consistently, would that make you happy? For most yeah. people, the answer to that is yes, but then you can always grow on that. You learn and you tweak your mm -hmm. copy and you make changes and you get better yeah. at making your offer or closing mm -hmm. your deals on your sales calls and you watch those numbers go up and up. Every time you run ads, you're going to learn something. You're always going to have data to pull from later. And if you want to run ads throughout the year, if you have an evergreen funnel type thing, you're going to have more data to work with and you will learn what works best for you and your ads. And having that knowledge is really great. And you mentioned this in the beginning that you have to set your ad up, but you have to give it a little time because Facebook needs some time to learn who to deliver it to for you to get a good reaction, a good response. Because at the end of the day, yes, they want your money, <laughs> but they also <laughs> want you to be successful because if you're successful, you're going to give them more money. Right. right. Facebook wants you to get a good result. If you think about it, all of these social platforms are vested in our interest. So one little fun fact here is that last year, YouTube outproduced Netflix. And I want you guys to think about that because in 2021, we were still in the pandemic, so to speak. A lot of people were still in lockdown. YouTube mm -hmm. outproduced Netflix. And YouTube pays 55% of every ad dollar to their creators. So you're being paid to create the content that goes on YouTube. If you think about Netflix, Netflix has to pay. They're paying for filming time. They're paying for actors and actresses. They're paying mm -hmm. for sets. And that can be a variable cost, right? And more expensive during a pandemic. Exactly, because they'd have all the precautions. But when you think about YouTube, which is the same as Spotify, what they're going with podcast, is that they have a fixed cost. They know for every ad dollar they bring in, they're going to pay 55 cents of that to the creator, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to keep those ad dollars coming in so that they're earning that 45%. And the creators are earning that 55%. It's the same with Facebook. Facebook cannot continue to run Facebook. I don't know how many people work at Meta now. He's got a huge payroll. And so you've got to keep ads coming in. And the way they do that 
is they keep those ads performing for you. Like you said, it's all, it's our responsibility to either learn how to do it ourselves or to hire someone like you, a professional ads manager, and then just work on getting better and better. So you're feeding the machine and it's spitting out that money for you. So Carolyn, let's tell everyone how to get in touch with you. I think you have a link to book a call. Is there any other information you want to give to them about reaching out to you? Yeah, you can find me on Facebook. My company is CMF. Those are my initials, CMF and company on Facebook and also on Instagram. There's a link there to my Dubsat scheduler. I offer 15 minute about sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you get caught up chatting with people, but hopefully not too much longer than that. I don't want to steal, take up people's time, but we can just talk about your business, what your goals for ads are and see if we're a good fit to work together. I also, I don't mind if somebody pops in and has a question here or there and I will do my absolute best. There's only so much somebody can do without really being in your ads manager. But if somebody had a question, I'm happy to answer. So thanks everybody for being here. I'm Jeannie Kirsten. Carolyn's here, our special guest. If you're interested in finding out more about hiring a virtual assistant to help you with your marketing, we help you with that, which is outsourcing a lot of your marketing. And also if you are interested in video marketing, and also if you're interested in some software that does amazing things like funnels and websites and everything you need for your CRM, we'd be happy to answer your questions. So thanks again for being here. Thanks again to our special guest, Carolyn, and we'll see y'all next Thank week. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Bye.